Are you looking for a way to manage your files on your Unraid server? Crusader is a simple to use file manager. As the configuration has changed since my last Crusader release, and I've had some requests to update the guide, I thought I'd get a new one out to you. So in today's video, I'll show you how to install and configure Crusader. And thanks everyone for the suggestion. To get started, we're gonna jump over to our Unraid server and open up the apps tab. Now we'll go up to the search box and search for Crusader. Just so you know, that starts with a K, so it's K-R-U-S-A-D-E-R. -E search for that, and here you'll find two different options. We've got the Binhex version and the H777 version. I normally use Binhex's containers, but in my last video, I did Binhex, so I thought, let's change it up this time and do the H777. So find Crusader here in the list and click Install. If you get the attention window that a port is in use, just go ahead and hit OK. We'll address that in a moment. Inside of the container configuration, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. The name is fine. The repository is good. Network type is fine. The container path is where the app data is. That's fine. Scrolling down a little bit more, we've got data path. This is going to be the first option that we're going to address. For data path, you're going to set this to the lowest level location that you want to give Crusader access to. In this case, I'm going to leave it set to slash MNT slash user so that we can move data to pretty much anywhere on the server. But if you wanted to limit it to just say like your data share or something like that, then you would just select that field and you'd browse to whatever you want. Like I said, data, you do that. I want the whole entire server, so I'm gonna get rid of that and just go back to the defaults that were there. Next down, we have TCP VNC port. That's currently set to 8080. And in the beginning of the configuration, it popped up a notice saying that a port was in use. Let's jump down to show Docker allocations down near the bottom, expand that, and let's find out what's using port 8080. To do that, I'll double click on the port number so it's highlighted. I'm gonna hit Control F on my keyboard, which brings up the browser's find feature, and it'll show me the results. It's showing three results. It'll highlight them. So we've got one, two, if we scroll down some more, and we find here Binhex Qubit Torrent VPN is using that port. So my demo server, I'm gonna have to change this port number to something else. So I'm gonna scroll back up, I'll change it to 8081. And I believe this one's in use, so it may take a few trial and errors here. Double click, find, it shows two, one, there's two. Right next to it, we've got 8082, and I believe 8083 is in use as well. Shows one, yep, 8084, five, six is in use, seven, seven's in use. Eight, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's not in use. Thought for sure it would be. All right, so it looks like 8088 is available on my demo server here. So I'm gonna change the port number to 8088. Scroll back up, go into the VNC port, change that to 8088, and we'll move on. I'm gonna close that find feature just to clean it up. Next down, we've got locales language. This is the language that you want. It's currently set for English. And if you look down below here, you've got some other options. There's English, you've got German and French. If you need to change it, just go ahead and highlight whatever you need here and then paste it in up above. Scrolling down, login as root. I'm gonna leave this on false, and that should be pretty much it. So let's go ahead and hide Docker allocations, scroll all the way down, and click apply. And while that's installing, why don't you come join us on Discord? I'll leave a link down in the description. And if you're getting some value from this video, why don't you go ahead and hit like and subscribe while you're down there. All right, once it's done, go ahead and click on done. Now under the configuration. Let's head over to the Docker tab now. We'll find Crusader in the list. If you want Crusader to auto start, then over on the right hand side, you're going to toggle on auto start. I typically leave mine off and only start it when I actually need to use it. So I'll leave it off. We'll go over to the Crusader icon, drop down, and select Web UI. You'll be prompted by a couple messages. Just go ahead and hit OK, and then OK, and then OK. And you'll end up on Crusader's settings upon startup. And I don't change anything here, but it's nice that they give you the option. You've got panel stuff on the sides, you've got colors you can change, just general use, advanced stuff, archives, lots of stuff. Like I said, I don't change anything, so if you did, hit apply. If not, just hit close. All right, so here we are inside of Crusader. It's nothing fancy, but it works. That's the main thing. So I figured now is a good time to give you a quick tour and kind of show you how everything works. So looking at the screen here, you'll notice that it's kind of split into two halves. You've got this half and this half, the left and the right. These are two different locations, and you'll see that's designated by the location listed here. We're both in the slash MNT location. So if you wanna move some files around, you have to browse to those locations. So over on the left side, let's go find something here. Go into the user, 
We'll look for data. We'll go to media and we'll find TV shows. In here, I'm gonna open up Beverly Hillbillies and you'll find some data in there. Now on the right hand side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go to user, but this time I'm gonna go to a different location. I'm gonna go to data and then media. And let's say for an example that there was a file in here that was an actual movie and you needed it to be in the movie location. We would go over on the right hand side and open up movies. Then at that point, you'd find the files that you wanna move. Then you'd use the commands at the bottom and you'd move it over. It goes both ways. So whichever one is active, if we're on this side over here and we click on a movie here, we hit move, it's gonna go from the right side to the left side. So it's gonna go from the movie location to the TV location. I'm not actually gonna move anything. So let's take a moment and go over the options at the bottom. If we look down here at the bottom, we've got F2 rename. So to use that, you would find a file that you wanna rename. You click on it so it's highlighted. You can either hit F2 on the keyboard or you can click on F2 rename with the mouse. And that puts it into edit mode and you can just go ahead and change the name. Let's say the year was wrong here and it actually came out in 1945. You can just change that, hit enter and it's done. I'm gonna change it back so it's correct. We'll hit F2 this time on the keyboard. We'll change that five back to a six and I'll hit enter. All right, next we have F3 view, which is for viewing a file. These are all image and movie things, so it's not gonna really play too well with Crusader. So I'm gonna go back a couple levels here. We'll find some data. Let's go with something text related. And here's a log file, NZB git log. Let's go ahead and view that. So we'll hit F3. I'll hit F3 on the keyboard and it brings up the file. All right, we can close this window here. We can hit the little X to close it out. Or the other thing is these three top boxes up in the top right corner. You've got light gray, medium gray, and dark black gray. The last one, the dark one, click on that and it closes the window. All right, next option, we have the edit option. F4 is edit. Once again, you can just find the file. You can hit F4 or click on the F4 edit button down below. The other nice thing is if you find a file you just wanna edit, you can just double click on it and it opens it right in an editor. Make your changes, save it up in the top here. When you're done, close it up. Next option we have is F5, copy. So let's say we wanted to move this text file here, this log file, from this location over to the movie location. You find the file, you highlight it, you hit F5, it copies it over. Hit OK, and as I said before, it all depends on what you're on, which side of the screen you're on. So if you wanted to go from the right hand side over to the left you just find the file there i'll get out of here and get something smaller i'll go under scripts and we'll find something in here let's go with this plex cache log file i'll copy it here it's the name of the file you can change the name if you want hit okay it shows up on the other side so you can go back and forth all right next option we've got is move f6 this one is just like the copy option, but it moves the file. So it's pretty self-explanatory. It does the exact same thing. Click on the file, move it. It goes from the left to the right. Or if you're on the right-hand side, it goes from the right to the left. Pretty simple. Next option is F7, make directory. So this makes a directory. Once again, this depends on which side you have selected. Currently, we have the right-hand side selected. So if I make a new directory here, we can give it a name. Let's go test, hit OK, and it shows up over here. If you click to the other side, that one's active. We'll make a directory over here. We'll call it test two. And there it is. Starting to get a bunch of junk in here. So conveniently, the next option is delete. So F8, delete. I don't need this test two directory in here. So I'm going to hit F8 in the keyboard. Do I delete this? Yes, send it to trash. It's gone. This Plex cache log I don't need. So I'm going to go down to the bottom, hit the F8, delete option. Once again, same thing. And I'll get rid of this test folder as well. All right, next option is F9 term, which is a terminal window. And this depends on where you're at in the file structure. Right now we're in this, you know, the scripts folder. So if you hit the F9 term, it's gonna open up a terminal window in that location right there. And you'll see that it does match up, slash MNT user data scripts, which is exactly what we have up here. Once again, the three little dark squares in the corner, the last dark one closes it. And then the last option in here is F9 quit. It closes out the window. So when you're done using Crusader, you can quit out here, but I just typically close the web browser window and call it a day. If you do do the F10 quit option, you'll see it goes back to a VNC window. And I found if you hit connect right away, it's gonna fail. So give it a second or two, then hit connect. And it usually goes right back in. If for some reason it doesn't, 
you can simply just restart the container and it comes right back up. Now, before I forget, I'm going to go clean out the other file I copied over to my movies. Data, media, don't need the stuff in there. All right, so now the menu across the top here, let's talk about that. It's pretty much a normal menu, file, edit, go, view, all that normal stuff. I don't do a whole lot with it, but there are a couple options in here that I thought you might find nice. One, if you want to do a search, you can simply hit Control S on the keyboard and it brings up the search feature. Close that out. If you want to get to that search feature via the menu, you can go up to tools and then search. The other feature that I find kind of nice in there is under tools and it's going to be disk usage. You select the folder you want to look at. We'll leave it right there. You hit OK and it's going to go and analyze it and tell you how much files are in there, how many folders, and then the total data size. The results are not instantaneous, so you do have to give it a few seconds to go through and analyze it. And as you can see, it's still going up. I don't need to know this right now, so I'm just going to hit cancel. So there you have it. There's Crusader in a nutshell. I find Crusader is easy to use, and when I need to move large amounts of data quickly, it's my go-to. So what do you think of Crusader? Do you use something else? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get early access to my videos and they are ad and sponsor free. The link is in the description. Until then, check out one of these next. And I'll see you in that one.